Hi everyone, let's trace the worksheet called Tracing Arrays Worksheet Number 1. This first line of code declares an array of ints to the length of 3. So there is my uh, uh, scratch work showing uh, the memory of the computer and how it allocates memory for 3 integers. The index positions are 0, 1, and 2 on these 3 elements. Uh, those are the index positions, 0, 1, and 2. The actual values uh, are 0, 0, and 0. You can probably assume are stored there because of the default, because of that constructor that's called there behind the scenes for the array class. Uh, moving on then, we have the variable called sum, and it's initialized to 0. So let's reflect that as well. And uh, this assignment statement here is storing an 8 into the array position 0 of the array named scores. So we find the array named scores. Uh, that, that column really should have been written sort of like right here because this whole rectangle is the array scores. So an 8 overwrites the 0 that was in position 0. And a 5 overwrites this 0 and the 7 overwrites that 0. So we have now executed that code, and we are ready to move on to this for loop. Ah, the for loop should have curly braces for good style, but I probably needed to save room when I wrote this, made this worksheet. I wanted to fit it on one, one piece of paper. So uh, we start in our for loop with the initializing expression here, before the semicolon, the initializing expression, which declares a, a local variable i, and initializes it to zero. So let's reflect that there on my scratch work. We check to make sure that i is less than three, and it is. So let's go through the loop. The plus equals means that you take whatever is currently stored in scores i and add it into the variable sum. Well, because i is currently zero, we're really uh, checking to see what is currently stored in the uh, position zero of the array scores. Square brackets, of course, uh, are, are being used here to indicate that this is an array and we're looking at position zero, which is an eight. So it's really like we're taking an eight and we're adding it into the variable sum. Well, eight plus zero is eight. So let's reflect that on our scratch paper. We are now done with the first iteration of this loop. So we wrap back up to the top. But the second time you go around the for loop, you come in from the right side and you do whatever the incrementing step expression tells you to do. Well, we're supposed to i plus plus. So cross that zero out, make it a one. And we check the, the control expression to see if this is still true. Is i less than three? It is, it's one. So at this time, we, uh, we execute this body statement again. Sum plus equals scores i. Well, because i is currently 1, this is, can really be thought of as scores square brackets 1. And what value is stored in position scores square brackets 1? The value 5. The 5 is currently stored here in position 1. So the 5 is being added into the variable sum, making it a whopping 13 now. We loop back up to the top of the loop. We come in from the right side, we i plus plus, i is now two, two is indeed less than three. So we execute this assignment statement again, but this time i is currently uh, two. So we uh, look up what is scores square brackets two. Scores square brackets two is currently seven. So a seven is added into sum and therefore sum goes to 20. We do loop back up to the top of the for loop. We do uh, execute i++. Plus plus. i is now 3. We ask the control expression, is i less than 3? No, it's not. 3 is not less than 3. Because this middle control expression evaluates to false, we do not execute the loop anymore and we drop down to this last line of code in this code segment. Working from inside the parentheses out, 
we find up sum, which is currently 20, and we divide it by whatever scores.length is. In the array class, there is a public property, kind of weird, but there's a public property named length. It's not named my length, it's just named length, but anyway, um, length of this array is 3. See, that's the length of the array, 3. So we are taking 20 and we're dividing it by 3. Well, that works out to be 6 point something. 6.3333, I believe. But because we have a, an integer, sum is an int, divided by an integer, uh, the length of an array always is an int. You can't put a decimal number in there like 3.2. So because we have an int divided by an int, Java chops off the 0.333 repeating. And we're left with just a 6. It truncates. And the 6 is what we end up printing out. And therefore, the answer to this uh, question is 6. I'm not going to do number 2 for you, but I'll just uh, hit the highlights. Uh, I see that we're, uh, we have an array of length 5. Um, everything's initialized to 0 at the beginning. This for loop will iterate 5 times. And each time it iterates, we are storing 2 times i into the corresponding position of scores that matches i at that moment. Uh, just doing this in my head, I can see that when i is 0, we're going to be putting a 0 into this position. When i is 1, we're going to be putting a 2 into this position. When i is uh, 2, okay, that was for when i is 1, we're putting a 2 into position 1. When, when i is 2, we are going to be putting 2 times 2. We're going to be putting a 4 into position 2. And you'll see a pattern develop here. On the EP exam, you will be rewarded if you see patterns like this. And you don't have to trace something out to uh, the, the umpteenth you know, detail. Try to find patterns, but don't be off and don't be tricked. Because a lot of the wrong answers look good on the EP exam. Anyway, uh, the answer here uh, eventually will be whatever the sum of these numbers, 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus whatever the pattern finishes out as, that sum is what prints here uh, in this question. Good luck with the rest of the worksheet and tracing arrays.